Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach and sheesh, I need some help with this lawn. This thing is driving me crazy. So it's Bermuda grass, kind of. I think there's some St. Augustine and Floritam in there as well. I'm talking like I know what the hell I'm talking about. I literally learned these names just a few uh, days ago. When I first started trying to save the lawn, I literally just ordered grass seeds off of Amazon and then I later discovered they were for northern climates. So there's some really thin, uh, <laughs> gauge uh, very green dark grass that belongs in like Nebraska uh, and surviving okay um, so anyway uh, what I discovered the main thing first was just to get the whole lawn green and then I did that and then I noticed that oh this isn't grass <laughs> this is like I don't know three-fifths grass and the rest is uh, uh, crabgrass clover and stolones. Stolones are the the vines that move warm weather grass. I, I, I'm, I'm about to wrap this up. I'm basically just trying to get some people to give me free advice about. So what I noticed is finally I discovered there was so much thatch that effectively the entire lawn is floating on a bed of thatch. That's why only weeds are growing. Most of the grass, quote grass, is just a bunch of stolons curled up on each other and like nothing's growing out of the soil. So I looked it up. I don't know if this is a total loss. I bought a dethatching rake. I'm hoping uh, some short uh, cutting and a dethatching rake and oh boy. So uh, give me your advice if you're from uh, uh, wherever they have this type of grass. All right, uh, less than two minutes. So anyway, um, the bad guys won. Uh, Frank Miller has been kicked out of a uh, convention where he was basically the lead draw. He was the person that people bought tickets for. I did a video on this yesterday and uh, very, very quickly the uh, convention gave in to the uh, extortionate uh, demands of uh, the uh, SJW. And then the SJW was grateful they made up. They said, I, no, <laughs> no, God, no. Oh, God, no. So the, uh, the uh, convention uh, backed out of an appearance, which they most likely still had to pay for, or maybe not. Now, technically, this should be a screen capture video, but I got a lot of stuff to do. I got to get two books to the printers uh, before August 6th, because then uh, my uh, accountants are like, we really need to get on your taxes. So it's like, all right, cool. We got a bunch of extensions because of the pandemic, but that well, last year I was all stressed out about it. And then I was like, oh no. And then I went to my records and I found I had perfect records. I just forgot I did. So for the last year I was literally, you know, inputting stuff as I bought it, but it's still like, it's a lot of stuff. Uh, so it's not that bad, but that's, that's a goal for me to have the, uh, the print files for, uh, both of them done by, uh, let's say August 5th, if that's possible. Anyway, so the situation was that you have Thought Bubble. It's a convention in uh, the UK, and uh, they had uh, Frank Miller and a bunch of also rands. Basically, the deal is they're going to have a couple people that people actually want to see, like James Tinian and Frank Miller. And then you got Max and Zaina Ak Aptar uh, from Short Bus Comics. And uh, so uh, Short Bus, which is looks to be you know just one person essentially, uh, made a big stink yesterday that the Islamophobic, everything phobic Frank Miller was there and it was an unfriendly environment because Frank Miller went, he went to, no, he didn't. <laughs> Frank Miller didn't do anything but accept an invitation, negotiate with his business manager, cash a check, and he was just gonna go. So they started doing the, this is a not a safe space. And it was so unsafe that uh, they were perfectly safe to say it was unsafe. Uh, the idea that Frank Miller with his hobbling you know, uh, and his goiter on his neck is a threat to anyone is ridiculous. The threat, you know, the call is coming from inside the room. The threat is from the SJWs. Those are people that are going to hurt you. They were hurting Rick Remender a couple days ago. Then they found out that the reason they were hurting him was completely untrue. It was actually the opposite. And then they just moved on to their next target, which is um, uh, Frank Miller. I did a video yesterday where I talked about, you know, SJW 101, the accusation is the proof, that they will lob accusations and not ever attempt to prove it to the point where you actually have to guess what they're talking about. So when they called Frank Miller Islamophobic, I said, I'm guessing they're talking about holy terror 
and they had this joke about a guy named Muhammad. And then maybe they're talking about 300, and then like everyone and their mama was like, that was literally like 800 years before Muhammad, the Muhammad, was born. Like, Persians back then were not Muslims. So, so then it was like, okay, so I guess it's, you know, uh, Holy Terror. Holy Terror is a terrible book that was made at the depths of Frank Miller's um, uh, alcoholism and possibly other uh, substances. I mean, this guy shaved 10 to 20 years off of his life. You can go back and see, you know, uh, The Making of Sin City, and he's this, you know, mid-40s, late-40s guy with full head of brown hair, and he now looks like, you know, this is hard to say, but he looks like one of the villains from The Sin City. He's hobbled, he's bent over, he's uh, essentially broken. Um, uh, but, uh, he's gotten better enough that he can tour. It sounds like, uh, Neil Adams really, uh, uh took him to the woodshed over his, uh, destruction of himself. Uh, I know there was an interview, uh, where they were both talking about that discussion. Uh, and that's a real friend. That's a real friend who's going to say, look, what the fuck are you doing to yourself, asshole? Look at what you've done. Neil Adams is 20 years older than Frank. He looks younger than Frank now. Um... And so uh, he's basically, uh, you know, 10 years ago, saying stuff like this about Frank was pretty common. That's why I found it so funny when a couple years ago, SJWs just decided they loved him. They loved him because a lot of his stuff was being adapted into TV and movies. And everything, everything for SJWs revolves around some sort of a Netflix deal, some sort of a Hollywood deal. That's all they care about. Uh, so he became a hero. It's like, I remember when y'all were calling him a racist just a couple years ago, and now now they're back. So uh, the, the racism is seemingly, uh, you know, Islamophobia is based entirely around um, uh, holy terror, which was Frank's reaction uh, to his trauma over 9-11. Uh, so they're, they're literally policing how he expresses himself. Um, he had a quote where he basically said, you know, when I, when I read my stuff, I remember what, you know, what was in my head, what were my emotions were at the time. And he goes, when I read Holy Terror now, I can't make another Holy Terror. I'm not that person. I don't have that anger. His anger was from having his, you know, uh, not his hometown, but, you know, the, the town for most of his life uh, attacked by Muslim terrorists. That's the type of terrorist that attacked it. And there was no diversity among the terrorists. They did not have a black lesbian with a French accent. It was all Muslim men, um, mainly from Saudi Arabia, I believe. So when Frank did his take on this real life attack, he had originally Batman, but then this generic not Batman, it's Batman without the bat ears. And Catwoman, except for she doesn't have the cat ears, but she has cat eyes. Uh, basically, originally it was going to be DC, then DC was not comfortable with it, and so he did it through uh, Dark Horse. And uh, it was terrible. It was very clearly the work of somebody destroying themselves with alcohol. And it was, it was not funny. It was not funny. It was sloppy. It was poorly done. It's like 20 pages of not Batman and not Catwoman having sex on a dock, and then there's a terror attack, and then you see really... Sl- One of the things they're like, oh, look how... Look how he drew the Muslims. Look how he drew everyone. Everyone looks like melting Muppets. Like, it's, it's, it was a debilitated, angry man writing this. The racism angle is Muslim is not a race. The Islamophobia, eh, I don't know. You have to, like, really take a dumb joke seriously to have an Islamophobia. He, uh, Rich Johnson was like, in this book, all Muslims are portrayed as evil terrorists. No. All the terrorists are Muslim, and those are portrayed as evil. Um, uh, Frank Miller did not choose for the 9-11 terrorists to be Muslim. That's what they were. So he was doing a, uh, a take on real-life events and using those real-life, you know, facts. N- now, yes, he did not shoehorn in a uh, proudly uh, transsexual Palestinian Robin uh, who, you know, would say awkward stuff. It's like, we're not all like that. And Batman would say, that's right, old chum. Just the bad ones are. No, he didn't say that. It was a messy work drawn and written by an angry, drunken man who was also probably high off his ass on prescription and non-prescription uh, drugs. Uh, he's uh, cleaned up his act. 
doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. These vicious, evil motherfuckers, they're just out to hurt people. Uh, so uh, they, uh, one of them made a stink. And here's the funny thing. So this Zainab Akhtar uh, is literally only known for doing this. She runs a small imprint, which is basically a bunch of SJW garbage books that woke librarians use taxpayer money to buy. Nobody ever talks about her except for when she's doing stuff like this. She made the news four years ago at another convention uh, complaining that there were, quote, too many white people. Um, and uh, then uh, she uh, did it again with uh, Frank. The uh, Islamophobia accusation is pretty freaking weak. Yeah, I think you could maybe get it on a technical level, but you, you could also say it was one instance once 10 years ago at what he probably considers to be the na nadir, 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 the lowest part of his life. Uh, so it was never about danger. It was about people who enjoy hurting others finding an excuse to hurt someone. People are going to read Frank Miller books 100 years, 200 years, 300 years in the future. People don't read Zena Ak Aptar books right now. Woke librarians buy them. Rich Johnston, when, she, when Zainab is not causing trouble at a convention, doesn't mention her. She doesn't exist except for when she is causing problems. Now, when Thought Bubble acquiesced to her demands, she actually redoubled her efforts to malign them. So now she is saying, you know, God, they always... They always use these canned phrases. It's like, you need to do the work. I am so tired. So what she's saying is, oh, look, it, it had to be me doing the work of you because you wanted to get rid of them, but you made me complain. They're, they're always lobbing these vague emotional labor charges at people. Um, uh, it's like, no, 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 no. You terrified them. So they, they gave a statement. And, you know, it's basic, it's kind of standard. But then whoever is running the Thought Bubble Twitter is responding to basically everyone. It's like, it's fine you do this now, but you should have done this before. They're like, we are so sorry. We were so naive. And they're just completely, like, debasing themselves, apologizing to the people who aren't accepting their apology. Now I have a question. Who was Thought Bubble terrified of? Thought Bubble is terrified of a Muslim woman. Uh, so the charges of Islamophobia, they're pretty weak for uh, Frank Miller. You basically have to take a joke seriously, you know? Oh, you're Mexican. I bet your name is Jose. Well, people call me Joselito, but yeah, my actual name is Jose. Uh, that's pretty weak, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, oh, he made the terrorist Muslim. No, the terrorists were Muslim. Well, the only Muslims in that are uh, terrorists. Well, there's like five speaking roles in the entire book. One is not Batman. One is not Commissioner Gordon. One is not Catwoman. There's one uh, uh, Muslim woman who they actually have a very heartbreaking scene of, you know, showing her kind of uh, uh, basically uh, using a guy hitting on her to get into a club. And then she does a suicide bomb. Uh, just, just a little background for people who actually give a damn and are curious about stuff like this. Um, it's actually uh, forbidden to commit suicide in uh, Islam. So what you have to do is essentially get an exemption. Uh, you have to get some sort of imam uh, to uh, give you, I don't know, I call it like the Muslim version of a plenary indulgence. You basically say, yes, you're doing something that would get you punished, but you're, you've been approved by this, you know, person in the, uh, you know, higher up in the religion. Uh, so the idea that Muslims just... Uh, do suicide bombings um, and it's encouraged, it's actually discouraged. It's very interesting, especially if you read about uh, Palestine, the history of suicide bombers there. There was a big like argument against it from the people who, who eventually did it because they're like, this is against our religion. Rich Johnson doesn't care about this. Zainab Akhtar doesn't care about this. I don't think Frank Miller's aware of it. Uh, but uh, it's one of those things where people who are curious and want to talk about things they look into it and they find out about it. Um, Zainab Akhtar does not want you to discuss things. She does not want diversity. She does not want inclusion. She wants to scare people because it makes it her feel good. SJWs do not want equal treatment. They want special treatment. They don't want respect. They want fear. 
This uh, short bus person is an absolute nothing in the industry. She produces a small handful of books that only woke librarians order. Uh, nobody checks him out, nobody talks about him. Rich Johnson doesn't talk about her except for when she's causing trouble. Frank Miller is a legend. He is a troubled man. I'm not gonna say I'm deeply troubled like Tom King. I mean, Tom King is fucked up. Uh, and he should blame the CIA and not us for that. Uh, Frank is a lifelong alcoholic. He's had drug problems in the past. Um, when you meet him, you, uh, you sense that he's a very sweet person. He's a very kind person. He's got problems. He's definitely got problems. He's definitely a troubled person. Um, and uh, people like Zainab want to erase him, cancel him, delete him. Um, they would push him to suicide and mock him at his funeral. He's unfortunately very sick. And he's not going to be around for long. And now, because uh, the cowards at Thought Bubble and bullies like Zainab Akhtar. And the funny thing is that back in the day, you used to get like, you had, you had to get someone you had heard of to cancel someone. You know what I mean? Like, uh, what was the deal? What was the cancel? So many cancellations, I can't tell them apart. It was one of, oh, the, the Warren Ellis. He came back and the usual suspects were complaining, but it looked like he was okay. It wasn't until Scott Snyder and James Tinian joined in on the digital lynch mob that he lost his deal. Now it's nobody's. Uh, Rich Johnson did this article showing all the people who were complaining, and you haven't heard of barely any of them. So now all you need is a fashionable and privileged identity to swing like a club, hit anyone, and then cry out that you're the victim. Um, uh, nobody has one here but a vicious bully who, when she was acquiesced to, then decided to attack the people who gave in to her. She's like, I am not going to this convention, even though they apologized to me, because they made me do the emotional labor. Instead of getting rid, they got rid of him because they're scared of you. They're terrified of a Muslim woman calling them an Islamist foe. How ironic is that? They're terrified of you. You're a Muslim woman, and you chased away a guy who wouldn't give a damn if you were there. You are in zero danger. The only danger you had is being near someone who doesn't vote the same as you. That's the danger. And you weaponized your fashionable and privileged identity to harm someone who's not long for this world, but is a beloved legend. There were a couple thousand people who were going to go to that convention because of Frank Miller. There is a couple, there's not even a dozen that were going for you. Nobody goes there for you. They might look at your table and nod and feel good about, I support that. Nobody buys your books. Nobody gives a fuck about you unless when you're scaring them and then they're just gonna do whatever you want so you go away. So who's the bad guy here? The guy who told one rude joke 10 years ago when he was drunk off his ass? Or you? who are only known for hurting people. That's it. That's the only thing you're known for. There isn't coverage of short bus, short bucks, whatever, except for when you're hurting people, except for when you're threatening people, except for when you're ordering people to apologize and then not accepting an apology. There's a fucking SJW 101 weaponizing apologies against the people who apologize. So I got a little bit more heated then, then Rich Johnson, like, like one time he didn't make things worse. So like with that um, Rick Remender thing. So then, you know, there are a bunch of SJWs who were not even in the country. They weren't even going to go to this convention. It was a bunch of nobodies. And then the other one is that uh, Zainab, she's like, yeah, there weren't any white pros who joined in. Why would they join in? You're viciously attacking a legend in the industry. Did you see when James Tinian was on the stage with... Frank Miller, he was literally giddy. This is their hero. They're too chicken shit to defend him, but most likely they're not gonna join in on this uh, because people actually like his stuff. They understand he's got a drinking problem. They understand he says some wild shit once a decade or so. I mean, he literally said, I would not make that book again. I'm not that person anymore. And now what does he make? He makes woke Netflix pitches, literally. What if King Arthur, except for a woman, got Excalibur? Uh, it would be canceled after one season because nobody cares because it's a complete cliche right now. That's the type of stuff he does right now. So you're torturing an elderly man. You're terrorizing people running 
a nonprofit convention. And it's really going to be nonprofit now. And irony of ironies, the convention is the one who's scared of the Muslim woman. It's not Frank Miller. He was perfectly fine with you being there. Can you imagine him ever in a million years saying like, uh, I looked at the guest list and uh, not crazy about this one. He doesn't care. You could be sat right next to him and you would be perfectly safe and fine. He would not be safe from you though, as it's been shown. So who's the bad guy here? You, you're the bad guy. You're the villain. You're the one who doesn't like diversity. You're the one who can't handle inclusion. Your idea of diversity is a bunch of people who vote the same, who have different melanin levels. That's not diversity. You're the villain. Everyone hates you. Some people are scared of you, but everyone hates you. And you're nothing in the industry. All you're known for is every four years popping up, using your fashionable and privileged identity to scare people, and then you disappear. Nobody's talking about your books. No one gives a fuck about you. They just want you to go away because you're scaring them. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.